This conference okay. will now be recorded. Hi, Jane, and welcome to T Cell Talks, and thank you for coming on again. Um, it's really good to have you here. Hi, it's good to be back. <laughs> Thanks. All <laughs> right. So tonight, we in our session, we're going to be talking about delivering attention-grabbing lessons in class. So teaching in the classroom face to face, but also online. And mm -hmm. um, I know this is something you have a great deal of experience with. And so throughout this discussion, you know, we're going to swap backwards and forwards and compare how things would be done in class and online. So are you ready to get started? Yeah, sure. Excellent. All right. So just, oops doesn't want to change oh yep there we go we've got the slide all right so first of all we're going to start with why you need to grab students attention immediately so in your experience because Jane you've also been training and assessing teachers um, who are teaching ESL in class as an academic manager and you've seen a lot of people teaching so thinking about when people don't grab students attention immediately what happens within that classroom what have you noticed wow they would disappear <laughs> they'll end up going to the toilet and they never come back or the teacher or the student no the students so if oh, wow. they come in and they're like oh here we go this is a boring teacher or it's going to be a boring class you'll find that you'll lose their interest and they will actually walk yeah walk right out of your class they'll just excuse them oh i've got to i've just got to go to the bathroom and then you'll realize that they actually haven't come back and you're like oh that's a bit strange mm -hmm. and um, they never come back till the next day that's how bad it can get um, and yeah. i've seen this happen because i've seen um, in the past when i've been teaching face to face you know across my the hallway you see that oh the other teacher might only they start with 18 students and they end up with only two you know, and when wow. I first started, I thought, oh, how easy is that? That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I wish my, my students wouldn't come back. But they always came back, after, especially after lunch. But, um, yeah. yeah, that's when you know something's not quite right. The next thing that they'll do is they'll grab their phones and they'll start oh, texting yeah. or they're going to, you know, they look online or, you know, all those kind of things happen. Um, which you don't want, you know, and honestly, if I'm, th if I think I'm having a really good lesson and I see that happening in terms of students bring out their phones, I get very curious and I always go and say, hey, what's happening? And I often find out it's not my class at all. It's because they're waiting for a phone call for a job opportunity because a lot of our students mm -hmm. are trying to find jobs. So I always try and find out what's going on when that happens. Yeah. So it Normally may not be a boring lesson. It may be that um, yeah. they're looking for a job. That's what I'm just yeah. saying. I A lot yeah. of language schools don't allow students to have phones in class, but I notice that students also use phones for dictionaries a lot. So what's the trend these days in language schools? So we're talking oh, adult students in yeah. the uh, language school, ESL school setting. Look, I think it's the, I think, I personally think it's because of the the teacher when it comes to no phones because I've noticed that most students nowadays um, have their phones right next to them. All right, they don't put them away. In the older, sorry, I think it's the older, sorry, older teachers um, mm. who really, they, they, they're really strict. They actually take the phones away from the students. Now remember, yeah. I don't, well, I don't agree with it personally because these guys are adults. These guys, yes. some of them are professionals. They're lawyers in their yeah, own country. Absolutely. So it's yeah, not something that I, I don't think is right, personally. Anyway. So just some schools have a no phone in class actual policy so that teachers don't get to override that? Or it's not really the norm? I don't think it's the norm at all. Okay, great, okay. I mean, yeah, I've look, never I, worked I in a school that had a rule like that. Yeah, because like you, like I said, mentioned before, students use phones as their, um, you know, dictionaries, translate, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, generally they do have them in class. Um, I actually encourage them. I'm a bit opposite. I, I utilise the phone. I utilise that yes. technology because they so yeah. they know how to use it well. Yeah, they can so go and Google not? something and give an answer. That yeah, find an interesting yeah. article. 
share it yeah, with your class. Yeah. So look, when I was um, assess the times that I've assessed teachers, um, the same thing as you. Students will come out, they'll be meandering around, um, finding any excuse to be, you know, out of outside that classroom. Um, and at the end of a lesson, when you ask students, right, how you know, how'd the lesson go? Yeah, okay. You know, what did you learn today? Oh, no, nothing. They don't even know what they've learnt. And this all goes back to the need to grab students' attention immediately. So, you and know, the other thing I, I just want to say, you know, how you said about, oh, you ask the student, what did they learn? And they go, nothing, right? I, I, how can I say this? But a lot of it also comes back to the teacher re emphasizing what they actually learned from that lesson. So, I yeah. find that at the end of my lessons, I'll say, okay, so what did you learn? And and or I'll say, okay, this is what you learned today. This, 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 and they're like, they look really surprised. I say, yeah, we've covered this, this, this. What did you learn? And by getting them to discuss that five minutes before the lesson ends, it enforces, oh, I actually did learn something. And so that when yeah. the academic manager walks around and asks that question, those students from your class will never say, oh, I don't know, I don't think I learned anything today, you know, mm. And then makes yeah, the teacher look bad. This is true. And I don't think a lot of um, ESL teachers realise that the academic manager or head teacher does go around asking or the student uh, coordinator or someone. They do ask students, oh, how was your lesson? How did it? They're constant. They have to because students are customers at the end of the day and they want right. to know it's how they can. Yes. And even yes, um, agents, the, acad the agencies will ask. Yes. And then they're going to tell the schools when... Right. Students aren't happy, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes, when yeah. students aren't oh, happy, I tell you yeah, what, interesting no one's happy. Things happen. I remember um, once there was a teacher and she was teaching um, a group of students uh, on the Gold Coast in a classroom and she had one particular student she berated really, really heavily, like, you know, really told her off. She didn't do her homework. She wasn't paying enough attention in class wasn't answering up enough, you know, really gave it to her in front of the other students. And she was talking about this in the staff room in the break. And I just said to her, you didn't. She goes, I did, I did. And I said, and how is the student now? She goes, oh, she's fine. She's fine. Nothing wrong. And I said, she's not fine. And she goes, no, no, she's Japanese. She's fine. She's smiling. She's happy. She's happy. And I'm like, she's not fine. And you're going to find out tonight, uh, you know, after class or tomorrow that she's not fine. And yeah, that student went straight to the agent, complained and refused to go back to the school. The school was contacted, the academic manager, and there was a huge to do about it. And that teacher ended up getting a lot of her classes cut and, you know, and she got swapped from that classroom. That's right, because students won't confront. It's not like in Australia, us Aussies will confront you if something's not right, uh, and especially, um, sorry, but yeah, the J Japanese, the Japanese culture is not to confront. So no. it usually goes around and goes back to management rather than directly with the, you know, to the person that the problems come up with. But anyway, yeah, it's yeah. Um, that does occur a lot, and I think that's a. a something that teachers need to be aware of because they think, yeah, the students are smiling, everything's fine. Um, mm. It's not that way at all. They're smiling, um, but it may not, not be because it's fine. No, that's right. That's just, it's either a, a cultural thing to save face or because they mm. know that, okay, I'll just deal with the lesson today, but afterwards I'm gonna sort this out. Um, but they aren't conf confrontational. Not, you know, that's generally right. the Japanese, that's for sure. Yeah. And unfortunately, so little... teachers are the ones that come second. They don't, you oh, know, yeah. at the end of the day, customers are number one and the agents will, you know, they won't, if if the agents don't get what they want, basically, then they won't send students, yeah. well, basically, if the students aren't happy, they won't send students to the school. And then that really impacts on the school's financials, really. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it is a business at the end of the day and you do have to think of your students as customers as well as That's students. Right. So, Unfortunately, and yes. As adults, you know, and, you know, so you can't think of them, I'm the teacher, you're the student. You shouldn't be thinking that way. You're facilitating learning for these adult students. But That's let's, right. on this 
yeah, on this point, let's have a look at grabbing their attention immediately. Um, and there's a few reasons why we do that, but um, the first one sets the energy and tone for the entire lesson. So do you want to chat to us about that, your thoughts on that one? Well, look, I actually love, you know, giving them, so say for example, we're going to be talking about happiness. So I actually do a bit of a, a, a song lyric gap fill, you know, five minutes mm -hmm. just, you know, right at the beginning as a part of my warm up to set that that tone mm -hmm. of what we're going to do. And, you know, we've already, we're, we're, I'm exposing them to that topic in that way. So yeah. I, I'll do it that way. Or another one is I actually do a bit of a game at the beginning. Um, mm. Again, um, I do um, a fun activity where I use musical chairs, but for adults. Um, <laughs> How do you it, do that? Well, I, you know, you take one chair away. And so you've, oh, yeah. only, so okay. you've got 18 students. I actually, with 18, I split them into two groups to make wow. them smaller, smaller circles. Um, you've got to move the tables away and actually have circles of chairs ready to go before class. So you've got to be prepared. Um, and then what I do is that, you know, it might be a topic, say it's an elementary class and we're talking about food, then we'll say, I like sushi. So everybody who likes sushi has to stand up, change chairs, and they can't sit next to each other. They've got to actually find another place on the other side of the room. So that is like, whoo, I get them all hyped up ready yeah, to that's go fun, actually. Yes, that's a before good I start <laughs> but I love that yeah. kind of high energy um, yes. feeling in my classroom I don't like them just yeah. sitting there doing paperwork all day you know yeah, and especially first thing in the morning, they need to get their energy up because students can be quite sleepy if they've had late nights, if they're mm. working or they're going out. Oh, in the the other one, the other one too is a um, squishy ball or a um, hacky sack. Hacky sack, yes. Yeah, I like using them, but be careful with those ones, especially with the elderly. Like if you've got some who are around 80 years old, just be careful. I've never had someone that age in my classroom, ever. Wow. Oh, I've had them in Japan because oh. the doctors told them to go and study English so that they can keep their memories and their yes, brain. Yes, yes, yes. I was just thinking in Australia. I wasn't thinking about overseas, but yes, you're oh, absolutely in Australia, right. Australia, you get them in the programs, in the Amy P program, because they're retired. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah, well, and they've, they've and come to Australia. Online. Something like to set the energy in tone for on when you're online teaching. Ah, well, you see, it's, it comes to the voice, doesn't it? Really, when it comes online, I find, and yes. I, I like topics, hot topics to start with to discuss. Yeah. I might put a, a controversial picture up and and say, okay, well, what do you think about this? And they're like, mm. oh, I don't like that, or I like this, and yeah, and then that gets the conversation going. It does, it does. Yeah, I'm the same as you. Um, I like something, uh, quite often what I do, like if they're higher levels though, is I'll have news and gossip. So, you know, students have to find something, um, you know, it was their homework at night, is to find something interesting, current event or whatever, doesn't matter what news it is. Um, and they have to talk about that just to the rest of the class and we'll all have a, like a, a discussion and we'll get some, some of the discussions get really energetic. Um, if someone didn't get a news item, then it has to be gossip and they get to choose. They have to say gossip about someone in the classroom and it can also be me, the teacher, but um, the students have to guess if it's actually true or false gossip. So it's a bit of a game with that. So I like to do that with adult students because, you know, adults, we all like to get together in coffee shops and what do we talk about? Current events, what's going on in our lives with our family and friends. So um, I like that too, to set a tone that we're all adults, you know, we're enjoying communication with each other. Everyone gets to relax and, you know, you don't feel like student and teacher. That's right. And you, you are, you're grown ups, you know, so mm. that's the thing. I think some students, some teachers, or well in the past anyway, used to treat the adults like kids. And I think yes. that's where the mistake comes in. You've got to respect them as an equal adult. Yes. Um, the only thing that is a problem is their English. It's not their intellectual ability or that, you know, that, yeah, that's what I feel anyway, that it's, it's the English. It's not because they, you know, they have knowledge. It's just that they don't know how to say it in English. That's all. 
Yeah, that's right. And that's the thing, it starts that class being a bubble of learning because everyone's in this little hub. So they've either played the games or they've had this news and gossip, everyone's had a bit of a laugh, a bit of a chat. They've gotten emotionally invested in a discussion amongst friends, not between a teacher and students. They, the, it's a really good warm up because now um, in these instances, students aren't thinking anymore about, oh, I've got to be perfect. They've just gotten involved in an activity that's got their energy up. So, you know, this whole bubble of learning process has started and that gives that forward momentum that you can then use to segue them into the material from whatever it was that you used to get them all excited and, and warmed up. Um, yeah, and what about, you know, the, it says switching you from teacher to a facilitator of learning. What's your view on the whole, um, I'm a teacher or you're facilitating the learning of students? Look, I'm more of a facilitator. I don't think, if you wanna be a lecturer, then you need to become a professor at a university. <laughs> and that's, yes. I've, I've, and I've met teachers like that. And I've said to them, look, you know, if you're just going to stand there and lecture students, honestly, go to the university. That's where yes. you, you're you needed there. Um, when yeah. it comes to teaching English as a second language, then really you need to be, you should not be talking more than your students. You know, That's you right. should, uh, the percentage of you speaking should be quite minimum because you can speak English. You know, I always yes. say that to teachers, like you're the one, you don't need to practice English. It's the students yeah. who need to practice. And if you're talking all the time, you can't listen to your students. You can't mm. hear their mistakes. You can't help them fix those That's mistakes. Right. If you're yeah. talking, you know, and how can they learn, how can they practice their English if you're the one talking all the time? Yeah. So it's really important that you give them the activities that allows them to speak, allows them to communicate and for you to be able to give them feedback. That's really yes. important because how do you learn without feedback? How do you know you're yeah. doing it right without someone saying to you, oh, it's better to say it this way or, oh, mm. we would use this word to, you know, but if you're talking, how can you give them that feedback? You can't. Yeah, absolutely true. So it's teacher talk time, 20%, student talk time, 80. And it's not easy. It takes a lot of practice as a teacher to get yourself anywhere near that. But that's what's got to be foremost always. We'll go on to the next slide now. Um, and we're going to just look at, because some people think, oh, I don't have you know, the right tools and, and skills to do this. You know, you need fancy technology to get their attention. So now I'm actually talking about the lesson itself. So we're talking about the materials. So we're past the warm up. We've got them all ready to go and energized, but now we need them to get into the actual material. Um, and technology is great but it can also be a distraction and detract from the lesson. I mean, it's bad when, you know, you have technology up and things aren't working well and the internet goes down or, you know, computers have glitches or, you know, perhaps the website that you were going to use, suddenly you can't find the URLs wrong, you know, all kinds of things can go wrong and it can really detract from a lesson while the teacher's fuddling. I mean, obviously you're supposed to have everything set up before you start. I mean, that, that's, that's a given. Before students even come in class. But <laughs> even then, yeah. But even then, it can go wrong. But not just go wrong, because if technology is leaned on too heavily, students are bored. They don't want to come to class to watch, uh, you know, a five to ten minute video to introduce them to the lesson topic. They can watch a video at home or on their phones. So they're coming in to see what the teacher's bringing to the lesson rather than just sitting there, you know, like being an audience. What are your thoughts on this? Definitely, definitely. And what you'll also notice that when teachers do do that and they just put a video on to teach the grammar point, for example, or they just put mm -hmm. a, whatever it might be, they'll start again, disappearing out of the room. They'll go to the mm -hmm. bathroom and then come back if you're lucky. Because they're not being um, taught. Yeah, and a lot of them will say too, is that they're paying a lot of money. These are international students. They pay a lot of money to go to a classroom to be taught. It is an expectation. Um, and they're not expecting to watch a video, all right? right? And so the thing is, 
they don't see that value for money. That's the no, problem. And so yeah, then yeah. you get complaints. Yes, you will. You can't rely on that. You think you're being all, you know, swishing, clever. I've got a great video to put on to introduce and present the material. But actually, that's what you think. But that's definitely not what the students see. And guest speakers is another one. Look, guest speakers are nice. But, you know, the presentation part of a lesson doesn't go long enough to really have the a guest speaker come out of their way to come into class and even if you have a, a video recording of a guest speaker again the students are just sitting there listening like an audience so they can be great but you know very small doses what do you honestly think? if you're going to have a guest speaker you might as well go to an event right yes, and then, so i used to take my students to hotter because it was free well, in those days it wasn't called hotter, but I used to take them to the art gallery and organize the curator to actually present all the different artwork and say, okay, this right. is about this or this is about that. And, you know, so it's an experience, not only that, yeah, we've got like a presenter, but we're also experiencing that we're going into an art gallery and this is, you know, this is what happens in an art gallery. Yes, yeah, I've done See what that I mean? It's more of an experience, not if you're gonna have a presenter, make it an experience make it a holistic experience that's all yes yeah absolutely and the last one realia you know i mean i've known teachers to bring basically santa sacks into class full of all kinds of odds and ends and bits and pieces for a lesson now it's great to bring resources and i know you're really great at this particularly for the low levels like you've got your magazines and and i'll get you to talk yeah. about that in a sec but you can overdo this one as well. Like I've seen people bring in a whole cooking setup and the whole thing and go over what each thing is. And at the end of the day, I mean, you can overdo this and that's a lot of work. I mean, you really should be a good enough teacher to facilitate the presentation and get students um, interest in a lesson and attention without having to go to such lengths. But having said that, I do love the way that, especially with the lower levels, that you have all your bits and pieces that you bring in um, from magazines. So do you want to just talk about that for yeah, a second? So for me, I love like junk mail. And the reason <laughs> current junk mail as well, because it really excites students when things are on special. So not only yes. do we learn about the different, if we're talking about food, different food, um, yeah. you know, we also look at the prices and then we start, I, I get junk mail from every, you know, grocery store. And then what <laughs> we do is then we compare prices and then we talk Good. about, you know, then we might be talking about comparisons or mm. superlatives. And so mm -hmm. which one is the cheapest, which one is Very cheaper? Good. And so, yeah. and then in real life, they can actually go to, you know, any of those Aldi's or Woolworth's or Coles, you know, and, and get the specials. So I actually yeah. relate that re realia, I relate it to real life. So that That's then true. what I do, it needs to go, basically when I use it, it needs to relate back to what they can use outside my classroom. Is it yes. going to be useful? So before you start bringing in spears or whatever, uh, <laughs> is that going to be really useful when they leave your classroom? And that's yeah. why I, you know, that's how I decide what's good, what's not so yeah. good. Um, the other thing is you're talking about the cooking stuff. Now, I used to love cooking in my class. So yeah, in my okay. days, um, yeah. we used to make cheesecakes and we'd make, so it might be on a Friday afternoon, we'd have like afternoon tea. So in the morning, we'd get all the cooking stuff and we'd bake or we couldn't bake because we didn't have an oven, but we had the fridges available, the, the yeah. student fridges, the staff fridges. Anyway, and we'd make cheesecake in the morning, have it set and it might be the, the day before really we used because it had to set for the overnight and then yeah. in the afternoon we'd have like afternoon tea together so yeah but then when we did that cooking we learned you know bowls or all the different utensils and even the terminology in yeah. in cooking like first we need to do this then we need to do this you know the steps the mm. sequencing 
and we yeah. learned that language and then I got them to use that language in real life that's what I'm saying that you learn those things in the textbooks that's what they go through and then in real life I take it one step further bring in the stuff and we actually do it and they're like oh yes we learned this and what are you doing yes I'm stirring pouring I'm pouring it and how many grams is it you know those it becomes more reality and so that they can bring that home with them you know they get the recipe and they can do it again yeah yeah no that's true it's but in real life though when you're teaching in an ESL classroom you can't do that every lesson you can't rely on no. such a heavy load of realia but the occasional it's really exciting and great for them but yes so for a, when in a lesson so we're talking about the three phases so we've got uh, presentation where you present um, the the material or you present the topic and the theme and what's going to be learned in the lesson and then next you've got practice where the students are going to practice in a meaningful way where they but it's controlled practice so that you can help them and then production where they use what they've learned and produce something themselves now so for presentation um, just stand alone yeah doing something like that is pretty oh you could introduce it occasionally but every lesson would be hard but yes in initially though it was you know those lessons seeing that would be fun definitely all right we're going to go to the next slide now still talking about presentation so this is what we're talking about ppp so in any tesol course that um is trained i've i have not come across one that doesn't have um uh, the presentation practice production method um, and this is what we're looking at. So presentation's role is for setting the energy for the lesson. How long should pre the presentation phase be? Good question. Uh, in my experience, I won't cut the presentation short because it sets the stage for everything else. And I need in, to make sure students are following, they know exactly what's going on and they're fully engaged. Once I feel that's taken place, then I'm happy to move on from the presentation into lesson material going into practice. But what about you, um, you know, when you've been doing presentation, how long do you think for your lessons on average it might go for? Oh, look, it really does depend on the students and it really depends on what it is that you're presenting because sometimes it does take longer than other times. Like it depends how yeah. familiar the topic is to the students. So, you know, for me, as you said, you know, you wait until everyone's got it before yeah. you move to the next stage. And that's the thing, you, and that's where it's really important, I think, to double check their understanding, their comprehension, yes. those comprehension questions. Like, do they really, because a lot of students would just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll just say, yes, yes, yes. And because they, they nod their head. Like, yeah. yeah, they nod their head to say, yeah, they understand. And then you go to the next stage and they're looking at you. They're just staring at you. <laughs> Like, I don't know, teacher, I don't know. And then you're like, okay, we've totally missed it. And then you have to go yeah. back again and say, okay, Absolutely. let's try again. <laughs> because, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a classic. I was, um, I'd been teaching a high level class, I think it was advanced. And then I had to go and fill in for some, for a teacher in the afternoon. And it was um, elementary level. And it's not my favorite level because I like doing the higher level. So, I had to, I, I just raced into the classroom and just picked up the materials. I hadn't had time to prepare. And the class, you know, the class was all friendly and they were smiling at me. And um, I held up the book, you know, in one hand and I'm pointing to the page and, you know, this is what we're doing and showed them. And they wrote on the board, you know, the, what, you know, the topic was and, you know, a couple of things. Cause I actually, I had to rush in to take over a class. So, you know, you don't have time to prepare properly. Um, so I'm doing all this and so I, then I read the first um, activity and I just sort of explained it a little bit very simply what I thought and I, so I said to the students okay in pairs and I used body language to put them into pairs and, um, and then I actually practiced with one student and they all smiled and I thought yep they've got it. I said okay in pairs do number one and they all just looked at me and I'm like Oh, okay. So then I decided I would write one of the answers on the board. So I put the first question on the board 
And then I wrote the answer and then I practiced it again with a student who was sitting, you know, near the front. So I thought, you know, everyone's seen it now. They've had, you know, the example demonstrated to them. I'm like, okay, guys, back into pairs, do it again. And they all tilted their heads the other way and just looked at me again. I'm like, <laughs> and I was, and I was like, I realized what I was, I was just rushing them probably speaking too quickly. I hadn't presented properly. They had no idea why they were doing what they were doing. They were just being told by me to do it. So they were all kind of at a bit of a loss. And I just like, I threw my hands up and I went, oh my God, kill me now. I accidentally said that out loud. The whole class just roared with laughter and we all just laughed together because they realized, you know, I hadn't gotten it right. And so then I laughed and we all laughed and I broke it down. So then I'm like, okay, deconstruct this first activity. I, you know, like we went right through the whole thing. I presented it properly, what the topic was about and, you know, broke it down with lots of body language and, and uh, demonstration. But yeah, if you, if you don't, um, do that properly so that presentation phase I mean I've had it go 30 minutes even like generally speaking you know up to 15 20 minutes but um depends how long the lesson is morning lessons can be it does depend on hours. how low the students are yeah true yeah because it does take extra time with lower yeah. levels and especially if you don't have pictures or things that they can look yeah. at visual yeah visual help you're just going to be taking ages to do that. Oh, and remember using TPL with the lower lesson, lower levels, total physical response, where sometimes you'd be acting out physically, you know, demonstrating. Oh, yeah. But I actually get my student, students to mime, like I, as part of an activity, it's a game. You know, when yeah. you're learning, oh, he is running. Again, these are for elementary. I love doing that. Yeah, I'm an element. I love my elementaries. Anyway. I know. So you might be saying, I am running, okay? So the actual physical things of running. So I actually do the running in front of them. Yes, I, I, I do look a bit like an idiot. Um, or playing Hello. tennis or swimming. Yes. So I do breaststroke for that one. They have a good laugh at me when I'm trying to do my breaststroke. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> so I actually, and then I, I make cards with those those kind of things or actually get it depends how strong my students are in my elementary class I'll actually get them to write it out like swimming or dancing or and and we actually put that in a pile and then we have a you just take a card and then you have to mime that action and everybody has to guess what you're doing like charades yes so they yes, got to mind yeah. those kind of the verbs. But anyway, it's a funny thing, especially when someone's yeah. written something and, and the person's mimed it really badly. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, that could be funny. Awesome. All right. So we're going to go on to the next slide. How to make a great presentation. So um, we're going to look at um, the whiteboard number one. So I've worked in schools where... Um, you know, part of the job interview process was actually talking about the whiteboard and the importance of um, setting it all up really, really well. It is, look, it is important for students to walk in and see a teacher who's well prepared and the whiteboard's got everything on it. And that's standard. And we'll do another P, um, uh, PD about whiteboard usage. But in the case of presentation the whiteboard should have a few things on there that are part of presentation so what would you list on the whiteboard as part of presentation well the key words obviously like for me I, I, I'm more of a communicative teacher so yeah. I like the communicative approach so I actually have key expressions up there on my yeah. board all right yes. and then I build up and then I have a column on the right hand side and that's for new words. Yeah, so yeah. I always have, so at the end of my lesson, because a lot of students don't take notes anymore, so I always make them um, take, take a photo of that, <laughs> of that list. Um, and then I quiz them at the end of the week. Um, I do a bit of a vocabulary quiz. But yeah, I don't, how can I say this? Nowadays, a lot of people don't have, they don't write on whiteboards, they actually present and have it on a screen and project. Yeah, so that's another thing. I don't like um, that. I feel mm. like it's so impersonal, but teachers love it, some, but it's not a favorite of mine, the interactive. I, I feel like it takes you away from the class too much. Oh, when you don't write. But the problem is you get sore shoulders if you write too much <laughs> on the whiteboard. 
Well, that's why but you I... wrote most of it on the floor. <laughs> no. So, but the thing too is you also have a lot of the materials that on your handouts as well if you're going to write yeah. a lot of things but um yeah and I also on my whiteboards I put like a, a, an example of the role play you know a b yes. Yes. you know if I'm yeah. not going to get if my students are a bit weak I use already like a, a template of a of a conversation and then after that then I whiten out the bits that they can change well yeah. you know rub it out it not yeah, that's it. important. Look, and I like to have an interesting picture on the whiteboard, particularly the lower levels, like you said, um, or I really like to have interesting facts. So I know I was teaching a lesson on the Gold Coast once and it was about safety and, you know, the students were a bit like, eh, why do we want to learn about, you know, safety from a, you know, kind of a, a workplace health um, safety uh, mm -hmm. perspective I can't remember the actual lesson topic but it was along those lines so I put some interesting facts up on the board but I left out the details the percentages so it's like uh, in question form you know how I think these were intermediate so how many people die of um, from sharks every year in Australia and then how many people die from snake bite and all these and the students came in and they're like oh like oh my god they're all looking at the, the things on the board and they're all freaking out and and um, you know so then we discussed it and I got them to guess and then I actually gave them the uh, actual percentages and or answers mm -hmm. and you know it really got them going because the questions were so confronting but um, well, I like when I saw one time a teacher had pictures of faces on their whiteboard you know or with you know the magnets and put up on there and yeah. I said oh they look nice like nice people and I found out later they were all murderers <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like oh okay so much for me knowing like <laughs> being yeah. able to know what what a good person is and all that. anyway Ooh, that was just a, so. or but I'm thinking imagine. well that was made it interesting didn't it because they've yeah. had they had that on the whiteboard and of course students wouldn't have a clue like oh, I didn't have a clue who yeah. they were oh my god they look like nice people and then there mm. you go you find out later in the in the lesson um yeah that these people were yeah anyway moving on that, that'd be interesting but yes these because they're adult students are like you and I they they're there um with life experience and skills and you want to engage them and, and so these sorts of things are good anecdote like if you tell a story about yourself you know if it relates to what's going on but you know or you discuss these you know things that are controversial you know all these things are really important but something and I, I think that's what important. teachers forget too that these people yeah. that our students actually have all these experiences yeah, they have lives oh my god what a thought. yeah it's not like <laughs> The teacher is the world. The, no. They actually have lives and they've had very interesting lives, some of them. And they oh, do, yeah. they can tell us a lot of things and a lot of stories. Yeah. Look, you miss out on so much opportunity if you don't use your students' life experience and skills in the classroom and you, and you take away all that opportunity for communication, like you said, definitely. But the other thing is, though, too, students will say, oh, but I don't know how to say it. Yeah, like well, they don't know. Them. You've got to help them. Said, that's okay. Yeah, I'll look it up. And that's where the phone comes in. Okay, so what are you trying to say? What is the word that you're trying to say? Or what are you trying to explain? And it might be about their work, you know, what they yeah. did in their country. So, and then the whole, the whole class, and this is the other thing, you need to get your students to work collaboratively together. Yeah. And that's why it's a good to mix your students up so that they're not always sitting with their mates. So that yeah. then they are a team. And then they, you find that if they're a team, they, they're very patient with each other and they help each other out. This is true. Yeah, and just like when they don't understand how to say something, you can get them to give you like bullet points of information that you put on the board or they write on the board and mm. then they get help from students like, okay, who would know how to, you know, join this up, you know, what word could go here. And then by the end of it, the whole class has actually come up with how to say something properly. Or yeah, you can not write just the one or two it. students that are good. Yeah, or you can write it up wrongly on the board or get them to write it up wrongly and say, okay, class, let's help this student out. How can we make this better or, you know, make it correct and get the class to it. So as a teacher, 
that's going back to that facilitating, facilitating. learning. Yes. They right. know, you know, you don't need to show anybody, but you know, you need to draw them out to be able to do this. And they're all going to learn how to do it, watching each other. So yep. yeah, so that's important. Oh, the last one, use your voice. And the other thing too, I just wanted yep. to say that, you know, when you have that kind of atmosphere, atmosphere people aren't scared to try. Right, so True. if they make a mistake, they don't feel, oh, I've made a mistake. They, they, they're more willing to give it a go. Yes, yes, when they've absolutely. They've got that safe environment in your classroom. Yeah, and it's really important, like drawing out and finding out in the early, you know, times when you have your class, who's good at vocabulary, who's good at grammar, who's good at all these Spelling. different things, pronunciation, <laughs> and then calling upon those two. So the class knows, okay, maybe I won't be good at that, but I can call on, you know, so-and-so because so-and-so will help me with the grammar. Having them feel free to ask in class, put their hand up and ask a person instead of the teacher, and they collaboratively, like, collaboratively, like you said, work it out and give an answer. That's amazing to be doing that where they're all working together. It really enhances their progress. It does. And then yeah. become then what you'll find is they become more independent learners. Oh, yes. That's what I find. Oh, that's another topic. Anyway, sorry. It is. We have to talk about that too, definitely. Um, last couple of ones, using your voice and body language and your energy. You know, if you aren't into it, they're not going to be. So you really need, that's where you're getting paid, to put your energy and your commitment into what you're teaching so that they will follow your lead but you do need to use your voice well and keep it interesting um and, and some clear good as well yeah oh yeah yes clear very clear enunciation definitely all right we'll go on to the next one okay yep, so, so don't go into practice. class half drunk that's the thing I would never. So this is about, like when we go, when you're overseas. I don't, then when oh. I went to overseas, you know, we had a lot of guys that would come in and you could still smother alcohol. They were naughty guys, mind you. Yeah, they went did out. They the night Sorry. Did they get? Yeah. Did they get sent home? Like told not to teach? No. Wow. Yeah. I don't no. think they get away I've, with I've had nowadays. one guy. I still remember. He still smelled like alcohol. You know, he dressed well. They looked fine you know because they, they're in their yeah. early 20s you know they look yeah. fine they look handsome they just smell a little bit so someone will you know give them a spray spray them down a bit and then they're yeah. off going to class because the problem is wow. you, they can't be sent home because they've got a schedule to meet who's going to no who's going to teach them yeah they wouldn't get away yeah, with that here that, that short notice Australia. no not in australia no. overseas yeah yeah anyway yeah. Okay, great. So um, now we're at the second part of the PPP, which is practice. So this practice phase is where now they get to practice mat and the material. Now, this is like you mentioned before, role plays and activities like this, where it's controlled. So it's laid out for them what they're going to do, the scenario and the situation, and they're going to practice this in peers or groups. Do you? So would you like to explain about the practice phase and how you've used this in your classroom? Yes, it depends how weak they are <laughs> or how strong they yeah. are. Um, so if they're pretty weak, I do just put it up there for them and then underline the keywords that can be changed. If they're a bit stronger group and I find that, you know, oh, they they can actually come up with a conversation, but maybe the English is not perfect, obviously, um, the structure is yeah. not perfect. I'll actually get them to tell me what the conversation might be. So, mm, for example, if someone is inviting someone to a party, I say, okay, will you tell me? So imagine, I say, you're going to invite me to your birthday party. What do you say? And they'll mm. say, oh, you come, my party. And I'm like, oh, where? Oh, my place, you come, my place. And I say, okay, so how can we say that better? What could we yeah. say? And then I, I get it from the students. So, you know, and to see, and then I can gauge, okay, how much they actually know how to say it properly and then I'll have that so I get those ideas from them you know I'll, I'll yeah. brainstorm obviously different parties and then I'll put it on the board um, and then yeah. they practice that whatever that's on the board that we've created either together yes. or, or I've put it up there they practice yeah. that set thing 
together in pairs and then I go around and listen in to what they're saying to make sure that they're even the pronunciation's mm. right, making sure that they do understand what each other's saying. And then from there, we adjust the certain words that like we might change the party. Instead of a birthday party, it's now a wedding or a Christmas party uh, or something else. That okay. Related quickly. <laughs> Sorry? I said that escalated quickly from a birthday oh. party to a wedding. No, I'm well, you know, to another thing. But um, yeah, we might yeah, we would brainstorm. Yeah, yeah, we brainstorm. What do we invite people to? It might be a, you know, maybe going to the movies or going to a disco or going to not 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 many people go to disco. Sorry, but maybe ice skating or an activity. Maybe yeah. they're going to play tennis. So yeah. and we would brainstorm that, but just the role play itself, having that to practice yeah. that, and then changing those key words, and then after we you know we we go around correct it. Um, so that's that stage anyway, and yeah. then I get them to memorize it too. No, that yes, that's good too. Look, I did something funny with some students once. They were um, again, I think these were upper intermediate um, level adults, and um, so we were practicing scenarios for invitations, just like you were mentioning. And it made me remember once that um, I actually did the Joey thing from Friends, and I just had it. Um, I I don't know if I we had a computer in the class or what, where I got it from, but we I showed the YouTube clip of Joey going, how are you doing like that when he met a girl? And so then I got them to practice in pairs. They had to come up the front of the class and I would do it to them. I'd go, how are you doing? And do that smile thing that Joey does. And then they'd do it back and then the guys would be doing it to the girls and the girls to the guys. It was hysterical, but it was really fun for them. So yeah, that practice with the different scenarios, you know, it can be lots and lots of fun. But, um, and it's making mistake time, you know, they get to, to have a good practice at that. Now we'll go on to the next section, which is production. So this practice can be a bit robotic. You know, like you said, you've put up the, um, the dialogues or the role plays on the board. It's been corrected, it's controlled. They know what they're saying. They've memorized it. But now production is where they go off, you know, the rails a little bit. And without looking at the board and looking at what they've got, you wipe it all down and clean it, well I do get them to practice it and with no trainee wheels where they've just got to do this and one way that I've, I've done this is to actually get them all up and it's almost like speed dating where they have to talk to each person in the class so they have to move around and speak to everybody and practice asking you know, those different you know invitations or like you know that for, if that's the theme or or whatever they're practicing and just do it off the cuff with each other and then listen in and give them feedback so what about with you? Have you got any other so, things that you do? Yeah, with me, I actually pretend that we're doing a production. So I go lights, oh, camera, okay. action, and I actually turn off the lights. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> and I actually get them to stand up and do, so say for example, they're inviting somebody to a birthday party. Mm -hmm. So I make them pretend that they're walking down the street and they're meeting each other and I say to them, because some of them will cheat, they'll try and grab their books and oh, no. try and, you know, do the role play with their books. And I say, hang on. I said, so are you going to go down the road with your book and then <laughs> open it up and talk to someone? I said, what if it's a really nice girl and you're trying to impress them? You're going to open up your book and say, hi, would you like to come to my birthday party? Um, mm. And they're like, oh, no. I said, well, that's right. So we're going to try without the book. Yeah. Okay. And then I do, I do the same thing with you. I actually rub it off the board. Yeah. Um, and then that's sort of like, there's just that panic. You can feel it in the room. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh yes. it's gone. And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. it is gone. But we've just practiced it. So it's okay. And you've got it in your book. It's okay. You know? Yeah. And so, yeah. And I actually, and then I get my students to vote. I give them little pieces of paper and right. then they have to vote which group or which pair is number one, two, and three. And I score ah, my nice. students um, yeah, with chocolates. Nice. I actually give them chocolates for first, second, and third prizes. Um, but I do it in a way that there's enough chocolates for everybody. So oh. you know, if your students are all good friends, Okay, and yes, they're exactly. working as a team. You'll find that those students who've won will actually share 
with yes. everybody else and you yeah. know you've got a good team there but if mm. you haven't quite gelled them yet that's when you'll notice they don't share <laughs> the top three <laughs> prize winners keep their chocolates when there's enough for everyone to have one that's piece of chocolate that's another thing you know what you and i need to have um uh, a PD session on is getting the class to gel when you first are given a class assigned one um, how to get them all gelling and make them all friends and all collaboratively working as independent learners together as a group as well so we're definitely gonna have to do one on that because that's so important well, you better note that but, one down then hey yeah definitely so <laughs> anyway I'm not sure if that's the last yep that was the last slide um so I'll just actually how do you go back I'll go back yeah so look the presentation, practice and production, a lot of people take this for granted. They read about it in course books as TESOL teachers, go, yep, that's nice. But they don't realise it is very important in the TESOL classroom because, you know, I know that there are published books that you use like, you know, Headway, New Cutting Edge and uh, all of those. And they basically have every activity from the very beginning, starting out, introducing the topic with some interesting questions, right through to reading, listening, speaking, writing, all of those skills and grammar. But it's up to the teacher to actually use that material and provide extra to do some work and present properly to the classroom to bring up that energy and get students engaged in the lesson. So, And yeah, I just wanted to say too, that? just mm -hmm. before you finish, see on your mm. screen, you've got feedback from the class. Oh, yes. You know, and you know, it, it's not just feedback from the class, but giving feedback to students, letting them know where the mistakes are in a nice way yeah. is the best way to get them improving. Because honestly, when they go outside your room, your classroom, no one's going to correct them because everyone's yeah. very polite. So the only yeah. time that they realise they're making a mistake is with you, the teacher. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. that's how it goes. Like today I met someone and she kept saying, he he don't like this and i said oh you mean like he doesn't like it and he mm. goes she goes and, and she's a high level student but she's still got this this one thing yeah. that she kept saying said why is it that i don't use don't i said well because we say she doesn't he doesn't i don't we don't oh and then she laughed she said oh that's like elementary level <laughs> And I'm like, <laughs> and she was an upper end student, yeah. you know, but so she was still making those. And she, yeah, and she said, Oh, but thank you for telling me, you know, because yeah. no one else tells me. And yeah. I'm like, That's right, no one else will. You know, when you get given a higher level class, like upper, intermediate, and advanced, often they have these fossilized errors. And a lot mm. of them are related to pronounce, uh, what are prepositions. Because yeah, that depends on which country they're from. But anyway, that's another thing too. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. But yeah, yeah, feedback. What I wanted to say was feedback is so important. It really, really is. And feedback from yeah. the class is this about the, the actual lesson itself is also good. Uh, if, you're, if you've done a really good lesson, a lot of students will say, oh, thank you, teacher. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. Oh, it was great lesson today. You know, that yes. that when that comes back to you, it's really, it does definitely feel good. Yeah. Actually, one of the other things that that bullet point relates to is making sure, as you said at the beginning of this session, um, that when they walk out of the class, they can answer anyone as to what they learned from that lesson. And that's feedback from the class. So you're asking the class, so what did you learn today? What did we cover? And what situations can we use it in? That also is like feedback from the class about you know how they learned but it's important to reiterate at the end of every class what you taught that class, as you said. Definitely, yeah, because at the end of the day, you know, students will forget and, and they'll mm. think, oh, I didn't learn anything, but in fact, they did learn something, <laughs> you know, and so, you know, don't tell me you spent five hours with these students and they didn't learn anything. They just can't, no. you know, they can't put it into words, so you put it into words for them. Yeah, and also into situations and into practice. So if teachers aren't using the PPP method in class, students don't always know what it is. But if it's been presented really well and they know the reason for why they're learning it and it goes from there, um, then it's amazing. The class, it has a whole different energy. Yeah, because they've connected with the materials that they've just yeah. learned and they can relate yes. it to their own experiences 
and therefore it, it's useful for them. Yes, yes, yeah, definitely. That, Actually, yeah. just before we go, um, I'll give you one quick experience for the listeners about what happened to me. And then while I'm talking, if you can think of one specific class where doing this made a big difference. But one for me is um, I had to teach upper intermediate level and it was the language to go book. And one of the lessons in the language to go book was all about cooking paella. And, you know, these were adult students and they were most of them living off ramen and noodles because, you know, they don't have a lot of money. And the last thing in the world they wanted to do was a lesson about how to cook paella. And so I'm looking at this thinking, I've got to teach this for three hours. So, you know, I thought <laughs> straight away, you know, yeah. presentation, practice, production, you know, how am I going to get the relevancy, which is another PD session, by the way, for the students. So, you know, walking to the class and doing what you did, you brainstorm first and say to them, look, you know, in what instance, you know, what are you here to learn? What do you want to do? What are your goals? Getting it on the board, and I, I'm lazy, so I'll get a student to write on the board. So students writing up on the board situations like get a job, um, you know, or date people or PR or, That's you know. True. Or, I had one that they just wanted to marry an Englishman. <laughs> you good luck with that <laughs> they're not all the correct no i'm kidding <laughs> but, yeah, okay. it's funny. Okay. but yes so going on from there so you know the, i had them brainstorm all that then we went i went a step further i said okay so you've got all these scenarios but you know what in what instances so get a job what kind of areas we'll look at this one and so they went on you know in a kitchen as a cook kitchen hand you know shop assistant all these things i said okay so a lot of you are going to work in hospitality or in you know, restaurants and so on. So let's look at today's lesson is going to help you learn about how to do that properly. But also it can be about, you know, how you talk to people when you meet them. So, cause they, one of the things was still was they wanted to meet people and make friends and date, as you said. So mm -hmm. that's why, you know, I said to them, well, today, um, what, what we're going to do is we're going to practice when you meet someone, um, what do you talk about? So I got one of the guys, he was a cool Italian guy, really good looking, came up the front. I said, just pretend that you've met me in a pub and you know, you're gonna um, try and chat me up. And he, I had to explain chat me up. So anyway, he's like, oh, hello, and you know, carrying on. And, <laughs> oh, where are you from? Because oh, I'm from Italy. I was like, brilliant, okay, great. So I wanna know about Italian food. You know, what's the best Italian dish and how do you make it? So he told me some name of a dish and he's like, I said, oh, how do you cook that? What's the recipe? Oh, you smash the onions and you squash the tomato. I'm like, oh my God, stop, stop. And he's like, why, why, what's wrong? And I'm like, oh, I can't talk to you anymore. I don't wanna see you because I can't stand the way you talk. It's terrible. He's like, what is terrible? And I said, you don't smash tomatoes, you chop tomatoes. And he's like, what? I said, okay, Cass, can you see? You really, and if you work in a restaurant, you can't say those things either. And I, well, what do we say? I said, well, today's lesson is all about cooking and we're going to learn how you, you know, treat the ingredients and the vocabulary that you lose, just like what you were explaining with your um, cheesecake lesson. And yes. then from there, they were all engaged. They're all like, yes, we want to know. So, you know, getting them to that sweet spot. But have so you noticed then that it's also because it's, it's something that they can relate to in their life yes in their life like yeah he wants to be able to talk to some nice woman yes. about oh yeah um, I mean this guy was a real charmer but yes. you know they do it's absolutely I mean like, if I went to a foreign country I'd want to be able to talk to people properly too and not feel embarrassed or off you know people being off put by the way I was speaking so mm. absolutely it's so important but the fact that you present it in a way that makes them understand why they need it and then motivates them to get right into it because hey we've got a goal to fulfill with this and I'm going to go out there and use it straight away when the lesson's over so so That's vital right. yeah so what about in your experience can you think of one less one presentation that stood out oh jeepers so put me on the spot Lynn um sorry I know there's always so many oh, this is so many um I don't have anything like that because like my I I think with all mine I just I yeah I don't have any particular one story or one student because mine mine are more like a the group we have achieved yes. this or we've achieved that rather than the one 
one. And with the lower levels, it's student. more like that too, for sure. It is. With a, it's a group effort when it comes to elementary classes um, yeah. rather than I, online. I find so much easier in one way because you've got that ability to chat more, you know, you're correcting yeah. a lot, but yeah, so mm -hmm. the groundwork is done by the elementary teachers for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, no worries. Well, it was really great chatting with you. I think we've been going for ages, so we might um, call it quits on this one for now. But yes, time for a cup of tea now. Yes, yeah. But look, thanks so much for sharing all your experience with um, the listeners and, and all this, this really important information. And uh, we'll have you back on the show uh, for a podcast again very soon. No problems. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye.